What is a contamination? A contamination is basically any time something gets into something else that it's not supposed to be there. It's like, uh, have you ever buttered toast? Like, you know, put a whole bunch of butter on the toast and you accidentally drop it and it lands on the floor and, and you pick it up and you see all kinds of dirt and hair and a bug's like, hey, how's it going? You know, thanks for the butter. At this point, your butter is contaminated and please, with all things good and decent, just don't, don't eat it. It's gross now. The butter has been contaminated by stuff that's just not supposed to be there. Most of the time when we talk about contaminants, we talk about water though. So you might hear about other countries that have water that's not safe to drink because it's contaminated. They have water, but it's filled with bacteria and dirt and other things that can cause them to become sick. So they want to be able to drink water. So a lot of people, including places like LCBC, we contribute money to be able to help them build wells so they can have water that's free from contaminants. But here's the thing that we're talking about. We're not talking about water this series. We're not talking about our stomachs. We're not talking about the air we breathe. We're ta not talking about any of those contaminants because the Bible says those aren't the most important. What? How can there be something more important than the air we breathe and the water we drink? The Bible says the most important thing to guard from contaminants, the most important thing is our hearts. In the book of Proverbs, it says above all else. Notice it doesn't say above most. It says, above all other things, above everything else, guard here. Above all else, guard your heart because out of it flows springs of life. Everything in your life is gonna come out of here. All the good and the bad that comes out of your life will flow out of what you put in your heart. Now, I'm not talking your physical heart, by the way. I assume we all understand. I'm talking about your, your heart, your soul, your mind, your spirit, your life. So. How do we guard our hearts? Well, let's compare our hearts to this glass of water here. So this is your heart. You're, we're all born with pure hearts and we basically have to guard our hearts. What are the things that wanna contaminate our hearts? Well, it's the things we watch, the things we do, the jokes we tell, the places we go, the songs we hear, the gossip we listen to, the gossip we tell. All of these things are the things that slowly contaminate our hearts. And we have to be careful, God says, because once it gets in here, it's really hard to get out. And it affects your whole life once it's in here. People change. Often when you hear that someone's like different and they've changed and they're not nice, you can sometimes attribute it to the contamination of their heart. Their heart got polluted. Um, we don't want that for any of you. So I guess it's as simple as this, guys. Go and guard your heart. Have a great week. It's not that simple. You see, it would be easy if every one of our friends was doing the same thing. Let's say here you have one of your best friends growing up and you guys have been best friends since you were babies. And you're basically gone the same kind of territory. You're guarding your hearts because your parents are guarding your hearts and everything like that. But what happens when your friend and you start to grow up and you start to notice that your friend isn't guarding their heart as much as you are? Maybe it starts out that they start watching shows that you know are not really made for people your age, or maybe it's you're watching things on the computer that they know they shouldn't watch, or maybe they start telling jokes they shouldn't tell, or they start gossiping, or they start going places and doing things with people they know they're not supposed to do. And before you know it, the best friend that you've had all your life, their heart has become contaminated. Sometimes this happens to our friends because they don't know any better. Maybe they don't know Jesus and they don't go to church with you and, and maybe they think this is okay. For those people, we wanna often kinda of encourage them and tell them. Then there's some people that they don't know how to avoid it because maybe their families uh, think it's okay. But a lot of times, people that allow their hearts to get like this, it's because they just don't care. Some people don't care about the contamination of their hearts. And you might think, well, that's not a big deal. It's not my heart. <laughs> you would think. It's not the case. So what happens when it's your best friend that you've grown up with? Well, you can keep guarding your heart, but if you keep hanging out with this friend, eventually some of what they're contaminated with is going to spill over into your heart. It's going to happen one million percent. It's going to happen because we become like the friends we hang out with, good and bad. So eventually they kind of tell us it's not a big deal. Why is it a big deal? I'm fine. And they kind of encourage us, like, maybe we should just try. Maybe we should just dabble. Maybe we should, maybe it's not a big deal if I watch this show. Maybe it's not a big deal if I listen to this song. Maybe it's not a big deal. And before you know it, we start to go, like, we see that we're being influenced. 
and our hearts are becoming contaminated as well. Oh no. So what's the key? How do we avoid this? Proverbs 13, 21 says, walk with the wise and become wise. A companion of fools, however, suffers great harm. Whoa. The Bible says, if you walk with people that are not worried about their hearts being contaminated, you're kind of a fool if you think that's not gonna affect you. But notice the first part. The Bible gives us the tip that we need. It says, walk with the people that are wise. We have to choose friends that are also trying to keep their hearts pure and that are helping us keep ours, the ones that encourage us, not make fun of us for not doing certain things, but encourage us. And I'm not saying that we have to eliminate these friends altogether, but I'm saying they shouldn't be our best friends. They probably should be more like acquaintances. And we also need to surround ourselves with people that are going to encourage us. God was faithful. And in my life, he brought several friends and one of them just called me the other day. He was trying to keep his heart clean as I was trying to keep mine. And it was a friendship that encouraged me. And that's what we want for all of you because no friendship is worth being contaminated. No. It's not, no friendship is worth letting this happen to your heart. It'll change your whole life. And you may not like where it takes you. So sometimes we have to have honest conversations. So here's what I want you to do. Talk to your family. I want you to talk to your friends. I want you to talk to your siblings. Talk to anyone that will listen about what does it mean to keep your heart contaminant free? Who are the friends that are maybe bad influences? Who are the friends that make you better? I, I think we need to be careful and I think we need to talk about it and analyze it and consider it. We need to be careful about this because your heart is way too important.